one of the cinematic universe is one of, if not the most successful movie series to come out of Hollywood, and it's the most consistent movie series as of yet. But with its wealth of popularity, does all of its stories fit into the seven storylines, or does it break the mould? The first of the seven storylines is Overcoming the Monster. Overcoming the Monster basically consists of, um, basically, the heroes fight evil. Considering that's the whole MCU's philosophy on beating evil is basically to kick it into a pulp, I think it's not surprising that they all fit into this category. Next is Rags to Riches. This doesn't necessarily mean that they are in rags to begin with. All it means is that the characters have a whole movie, I Lost Something story arc. This includes Ant-Man, Iron Man, Iron Man 3, Thor, Thor Ragnarok, Captain America, Avengers Infinity War, if you believe Thanos is the good guy. In Iron Man, Tony Stark was stuck in a cave with scraps and used them to build the first arc reactor at the Mark 1 suit in order to escape, going back to his regular life. He went from riches to rags to riches, of which most of these stories kind of go. In Iron Man 3, Stark ends up getting his house blown up by the Mandarin and, you know, uses his engineering know-how to make gadgets to help him get to the Mandarin without any of his suits. In Thor, Thor is cast out to Earth because he is no longer worthy of holding Mjolnir, his hammer. Um, so he, Thor loses his worthiness, therefore he lost the ability to lift Mjolnir and the stuff on Earth, until he regained his worthiness and went back to Asgard. In Thor Ragnarok, Mjolnir is destroyed and he is lost on a planet where being rightful king to Asgard and God of Thunder has done him no good, so he has to pretty much rely on his ability to fight to get back to Asgard. In Ant-Man, it's a more literal rags to riches story, as he, as he was a broke ex-con until he became Ant-Man. In Captain America, Steve Rogers was a scrawny Brooklyn kid who could not stand up for himself, but eventually he became a super soldier and the rest of the story is pretty obvious. The next part is the quest. The only quest I can think of from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is Thor and Rocket story in Infinity War basically being a quest to forge Stormbreaker for Thor, and Doctor Strange's quest in his movie to regain his hands, all of which gets put on hold after when massive benders from the nth dimension showed up. This is the only quest in the MCU I can think of. Voyage and Return. Basically, they have to go someplace and come back with Nothing but knowledge. Iron Man and Captain America have similar plots of Void of Return being to and from war. Iron Man being, you know, from the Ten Rings hideout to regular civilization. Comedy. Most Marvel movies have quite a bit of comic relief. But Thor Ragnarok and Spider-Man Spider -Man Homecoming Guardians of Galaxy, both volumes 1 and 2, have are pretty heavy with their comedy with Thor Ragnarok being full of gags and Guardians of the Galaxy being mostly set up by the comedic effect of the Guardians working together kind of effectively, I guess. Tragedy. Tragedy is when in the movie usually has some sort of massive bad effect really. Let's take say for example well, everyone's favourite Marvel movie Civil War. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get so much for that. In Civil War, the main thing is that there's a civil war within the um, Avengers headquarters. Basically, uh, after Scarlet Witch accidentally blows up a building with Wakandan refugees in, uh, they basic the world is basically against the Avengers. A document that basically says that they are now owned by the government. Captain America and Merry Band of Avengers eventually say no, leading to a bit of internal conflict until everyone's favourite Captain America knockoff, Bucky Barnes, shows up. Eventually, he, everyone starts going on a manhunt for Bucky except for Captain America and his friends. At the end, it is revealed that it was all set up by Helmut Z Zemo, a Sokovian soldier who's 
Stanley was killed in Sokovia in Avengers 2. At the end, Zemo says that um, Hydra was only able to live because it was toppled by its enemies, and that meant that it could grow again. However, an empire toppled by a friends would never rise again, according to him at least. At the end, he says that he's already won despite being in jail. And it then there comes a setup for, you know, Avengers 3. As for Infinity War, you know, basically the direct sequel of both Civil War and Avengers 2, the bad guy, Thanos, goes from planet to planet looking for Infinity Stones for the Infinity Gauntlet. Incredibly, you know, incredibly creative naming, guys to wipe out half of all life in the universe to save it from overpopulation. But the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy can stop him. Right? Wrong. This is one of the two MCU movies where the bad guy wins, the other being Civil War. This results in a tragic ending for both the heroes and viewers, as many are too used to happy endings and unres unresolved storylines. Breaking this trend would, you know, definitely send shock to the viewer, therefore making it seem more out of the blue. Rebirth. The one lesson that all the heroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have learnt is that if you can't be a hero without your gifts, you don't deserve them. Stark learned this when the Mark 42 deactivated in Iron Man 3 when he eventually destroyed all of his suits to stop working on the wall and got rid of his arc reactor to set a new beginning and a new tone for Iron Man. In Doctor Strange, Stephen found this out when his hands were destroyed by the car accident he was in and eventually became the Sorcerer Supreme. In Spider-Man Homecoming, the, the newest one, not the Amazing Spider-Man of the Maguire trilogy, sadly, Peter Parker learned this when fighting the Vulture with it, without his high-tech suit after it was confiscated by Tony Stark. Stark wanted to, um, Peter to learn this lesson and force him to go through it. In Thor Ragnarok, Thor learns how to use his powers without Mjolnir aiding him and ends up becoming King of Asgard. Well, what's left of it at least. There are plenty more examples, but I only have so much time left. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is one of the biggest shared universes piece of fiction, only being dwarfed by the Marvel or comics. But even the best, most amazing stories have to be built on the shoulders of giants, as this proves.